Hey guys, today we're gonna be looking at more cnidarians and specifically siphonophores. If you don't know what a siphonophore is, well, just stay tuned. I'm about to tell you everything you need to know about them. But before we dive in, smash that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything ocean related that I might post. All right, let's dive into the siphonophore. Today, we are looking at siphonophores. Siphonophores are found within the phylum Cnidaria and they're in the class Hydrozoa and the specific order that they are in is called Siphonophora. There are around 175 known species of siphonophores and these are colonial organisms that make up a mass that resembles one full organism. The most famous siphonophore is the Portuguese man of war, which may look like a jellyfish, but believe me, it is not. It floats using its gas-filled float and captures prey with its many stinging tentacles covered with nematocysts, which is a reminder of why these animals are cnidarians. They sting. But enough on the man of war. If you are interested in the man of war, go watch my video that I already made on them, linked in the description and also in the top right hand corner of the video right now. Not all siphonophores float on the surface, however. Most of them just sit in open water floating in the water column. The gas filled float at the front of the siphonophore is called a pneumatophore. They're able to regulate their gas content within their pneumatophore so that they can adjust their position within the water column. They're able to swim using a swimming bell, which looks similar to how true jellyfish swim as well. They are really high in abundance in the world's oceans. However, these are very fragile gelatinous organisms, so they are not typically found near coasts or near the shore, with the exception of man of wars washing ashore frequently. Back to them being colonial organisms though, these organisms reproduce and grow asexually by essentially cloning themselves and each individual organism has a purpose, whether it be for feeding or reproducing or for just swimming. Each individual is called a zoid. These colonies can grow extremely long too, with some large species growing to over 100 feet long. For example, this 47 meter long swirling siphonophore in this picture seen in Australia is considered the longest animal ever found. And it all started with one zoid. How fascinating is that? The organism is technically several organisms working as one. Zoids meant for swimming cannot feed and zoids meant for feeding cannot swim. Everyone just works together. Behind the nematophore, there is nectophores, which are specialized in swimming for the organism, and this region of the animal is called the nectosome, while the next region is called the siphosome, which contains all other zoids that could be specialized in feeding or reproduction and whatever else. While they do feed on small planktonic organisms, they also can feed on small fish as well, and many species found in the deep sea actually possess bioluminescent digestive systems which can be reddish or orangish in coloration. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the siphonophore. Make sure to comment your favorite fact that you learned about them down below and smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for watching.